Hello, my name is Rachel Bennett. I was tasked with reading A Letter to My Son by Tom Nishi Kotes. Along with this article came the question, According to the author, how has the quality of life for a black man changed in the U.S. over time? A Letter to My Son by Tom Nishi Kotes is a letter from a father to his son about the hardships of being black and no matter how the progress we made in civil rights there are still underlying issues that have no progress this article was put into the world originally as part of a book it was made to be a literal letter to his son to explore and explain what it means to be black in america the audience is also intended to not only be his son, but also other African Americans. Cotes begins this letter with recalling how he struggled to help his son after the killer of Michael Brown is not convicted of his crimes. He feels offering comfort would be dishonest. Instead, he tells his son the same thing his parents told him. He repeatedly recalls times where he was exposed to the reality of the world he lives in. First, he tells of when he was a child and the fear he saw in the people around him. It was a fear he didn't truly understand. He recalls seeing it in the older boys in his neighborhood, in his father, and even in the eyes of his grandmother. It was a fear he never truly understood until a gun was pointed at him. Cotes recalls that moment as the first time he was awakened to the reality of the world around him. He then proceeds to his college years, attending Howard, a school in Washington, D.C., with a strong history of black Americans. He describes the school as if it is a paradise. How his teachers broke down the myths in his head and exposed the truth of the real world to him once again. Cotes then transitions from the ideal of college to his adult life as a parent. He describes the day he went to a movie theater with his son. He recalls the anger he felt as seeing his son get pushed by a white woman and his confrontation with that woman. A man, who was also white, stood up for that woman. And the Cotes knows the reason, reader, his thoughts at the man's threat to have him arrested. Cotes uses the format of a letter to show his reader his experiences as a black man, and to address the issues that affect both him and his son. He uses this to prepare his son for the world, and to expose the same issues his son will have to face to his audience. His main points in this article are how the ideas of race are false. The dream, the history of destroying the black body in America, and the vulnerability of those same black bodies in modern America. I have seen the dream all my life. It is perfect houses with nice lawns. It is Memorial Day cookouts block associations, and driveways. The dream is tree houses 
and the Cub Scouts, and for so long I have wanted to escape into a dream, to fold my country over my head like a blanket. Cotes. Cotes first presents the dream as the way the white population of America lives. He remembers his longing for a life he had seen on TV, a life that belonged to little white boys, where the boys lived in suburban homes without fear that they could be shot or killed, a life of blueberry pies and barbecues, a life that was part of the dream, a life that he had longed for during childhood, and yet felt that he was denied because of the color of his skin. And knowing this, knowing that the dream persists by warring with the known world, I was sad for the host. I was sad for all those families. I was sad for my country, but above all, in that moment, I was sad for you. Cotes Cotes presents the dream as a product of white supremacy in America. The dream rests on our backs, the bedding made from our bodies. Cotes. This quote addresses his son, telling him that it is because of them and their struggle, and their ancestors' struggle, that the dream exists. The way he speaks and his choice of words make it seem as if those of the same race as he are excluded from being part of the dream. And it can make sense, as another way he interprets a dream is as the illusion of equality. Families, believing themselves white, were out on the streets. Infants, raised to be white, were bundled in strollers. And I was sad for these people, as much as I was sad for the host, and sad for all the people out there, watching and reveling in my spacious hope. I realized then why I was sad. When the journalist asked me about my body, it was like she was asking me to awaken her from the most gorgeous dream. Cotes recalls the realization he came to in his college years, while attending Howard. He saw how they were becoming a people and not just a race. He saw other college students living their lives without fear as he grew up, surrounded by. He saw kids playing frisbee in the park. He saw a cross-section of all people of the world throwing together and making it work. It wasn't people acting as stereotypes. It was people acting what, on what they had learned as they grew up. It was history and heritage. It was what people saw themselves that truly formed them. In the grand scheme of things, Cotes feels that there are still underlying struggles that black men face. Even though they are no longer enslaved, many still feel the fear that was a daily reality for their ancestors. During the days of slavery, black men feared oppression the oppression of the white landowners who own them. Today, black men fear the racial profiling that is so prevalent. They feel fear being blamed for things they did not do, and for being thought as guilty just because of the color of their skin. They also feel inferior to white men for no other reason than the white men look down upon them. In the article, Kota says, You and I, my son, are that below. It was that was true in 1776. It is true today. Cotes goes into detail regarding the struggles he and other black youth faced growing up. To be black in the Baltimore of my youth was to be naked before the elements of the world, before all the guns, fists, knives, crack, rape, and disease. The law did not protect us. Cotes. Cotes argues that the law did not protect him and others of his race when he was young. He was exposed to crime at such a young, young age without the law to protect them. There was no barrier for him from the harsh world, and he saw a lack of justice. 
He tells of different stages in his life and experience his son has also had. He tells us about how fear was present in his family members and how his father beat him as a form of punishment with the mindset of, if I don't do it, then the police will. He remembers how the older boys in his neighborhood would use their clothes as armor. The fear lived on in their practiced bop, their slouching denims, their big t-shirts, the calculated angle of their baseball caps, a catalog of behaviors and garments that enlisted to inspire the belief that these boys were in firm procession of everything they desired. Cotes. These, those boys use the clothing as an armor against the world. Cotes uses this argument to show how vulnerable a black man still is in modern society. Thank you.